Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Disco Elysium. We have a couple things to do in this video, so we're going to try and get started on the right way. We have to turn in the trap thing. We also have to sync our signs with Noid. We have to offer, for, or we need more figurines to Dolores Day. Which is odd, but that's fine. And then we also have to give Titus, or we have to make Titus give up Ruby's location. So those are things we need to get done. First of all, Noid. Who's here? You got us in, cop. I can't believe you got us in. He looks around the hall, examining the carpentry. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority, but you, you really came through for the hardcore underground. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore underground. How come? He spreads his arms, looking around at the speed freak setting up shop. Andre is busy cutting some slightly less lame, but still ungainly shapes on the church floor, sweating profusely. Excel is using or Excel is using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat, while the stained glass window behind him is rattling from the base. Sire of the tent, twas a security risk, and in here, sanctuary, twas only noble of you. I'm genuinely into the hardcore lifestyle, you wouldn't understand. Actually, I did it for mankind, for all of mankind. Okay. The lieutenant keeps it laconic. Noid, what do you think about the church? It's a miracle of carpentry, dead bodies carved into total shapes, now it can be something more. He rubs his hands together. How do you look at glasswork? I point to the stained glass window. I don't. He looks over his shoulder. Fucker gives me the evil eye. That's her innocence, Dolores Day, mind your words. You defend her, law minion? He cracks his, cracks his neck. She was a mass murderer, what's up with that? Mellow man, mellow, yells his friend. No one's a mass murderer, this is a house of love. Mass murderer on the floor. Would you say she was, you know, human? Huh, the young man stretches his ribcage made of suspenders. I like this question, cop man. She did not live the life of a human. She lived the life of someone who's playing a game, the life of an operator. That's not the life that humans live. She was adored. Humans aren't. I don't know about you, but they hate me. And they do not think I'm innocent or some shit like that. Yeah, they hate this too, I point to yourself. While well, they loved her, they put all their love in her and forgot about the rest of us. The young man lets go of the suspenders and they hit his chest with a slap. But she's the innocence of humanism. Humanism seems to be a pretty big deal around here. Humanism leads to eating sugar and pigs. Humanism was invented to mass produce billions of humans. Billions of humans can mass produce hundreds of billions of pigs. And how many, many more tons of sugar? She liked games. Her legacy, the thing we're living, isn't real life. It's a strategy for some kind of victory against a long dead opponent. But yo, I'm only the annoyed. What do you know? Or what do I know? But she's pretty. She invented the beauty you're feeling. She and her glass cutters and iconographers. He looks up to her face. You set the standard, all right. Then you meet it. It's effective like that, but it's also very soft of core, that so-called beauty of hers. You're right, I like it harder core. In the true life of tomorrow, every woman will be in innocence. They will wear neon headbands and leggings and they'll glow in the dark. His eyes smile enigmatically. Yeah, but like, who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? No one, says Arno Van Eyck is a mass murderer. The anodic pioneer, Reitvolt, was also not a mass murderer. He is not accused of mass murder. Likewise, no one says that Germain, Egghead, or Andre are mass murderers. You can live entirely outside that suspicion. Billions of people go about be being not or not being guilty of mass murder. He nods, or he nods up, just not her. I do feel there's something terrifying about her. There it is, or there is. She's a party repellent and must be taken down before we begin partying in here. Keep it. Keep the beautiful shar sharp shards. Keep her long face and her hair. The speed freak's eyes narrow with suspicion, as if he's looking at a man possessed. It's not coming down. People are gonna love it. It'll be like our thing. His friend keeps dancing. Plus, it keeps out the cold and the rain. Isn't she supposed to be the embodiment of the world spirit? The world spirit does not have a body. It has organs. Hardcore is an organ of the world spirit. He raises his left hand. This Arno Van Eyck track is an organ. The, comp er, the carpentry and glass cutting that built this house, also organs. She's a thief, if you ask me. An organ thief. All innocents are. The resettlement programs were totally okay. I'm a big fan of resettlement programs for some reason. Are you a commie cop? I am. Then that's why. Communism is a bloodier humanism, if you ask me. Has her love all over it, he nods up. Yeah, I don't want to talk about her anymore. What a strange choice about words. Caustic, overflowing with negativity. That can't be healthy. What's happening here? Why do you keep going back to the window? It's a nice window. Well, or why do you keep saying that if it isn't making you feel well? Don't go back to this play anymore. Stop talking about the damn window. 
How old do you think the church is? 320 years, a little more. The first settlers built it, plus six more like it on the coast here. Was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something, I understand. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, forced to face themselves in nature, pre-industrial quantities of solitude, the sea, perhaps something more fundamental. I'd want to build a safe place for myself and my own as well. His voice echoes in the wooden cavern of the church. Something more fundamental, you mean some... You mean the sound anomaly? Maybe, he looks up under the rafters. Maybe they're unable to face the nature of the world perishing. What style is the church built in? A cop who's into building critique. He taps the floor, but okay, then this is folk DeLoreanism, law lawmonger. It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. Okay, and what's that? What is DeLorean architecture like? Total, everything between ancient concrete cathedrals and a glass cube is DeLoreanism. This is just a homespun version of it, folksy stuff, early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you out? What would a DeLorean building look like? Like that woman there, he nods towards the stained glass window. Vertical, thin, white, a false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug that power vertical. I like to show off their large and intricate structures, arches, spires, put you down with them. They're really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know? Marriage shit. Virtue and tyranny. This church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. It stands to reason it used to be white on the outside. He peeks out of a small window in the dark before the sea wind took all the paint off. What do you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies of perennial plants, he taps on the wood. Sigma functions have left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets sucking their or suckling their dead mother. Have you heard of this one, cop man? He continues while wait, without waiting for an answer. After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother wasn't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is a high-quality carcass. He kicks the floorboard. The power of anodic beats and hard bass is needed to reanimate it. First, where's that quote from? A uh, Ceres man who lived long ago. An ancient hardcore brother. What you're saying is you're not a fan of the Inesotic system. Inesthetic system. A 3,000-year-old tyrannical regime of history built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self-appointed intellectuals. He looks around. It's false core. The way he says it, the false in false core is invested with 20 kilotons of disgust. But you guys said the ecclesiastes, or said the ecclesiastes were all about love and hardcore before, remember? I only said unity, one word. Figures of authority always misquote you, he points to his friends. Andre doesn't care about the ecclesiasts. He wants the operation to run smoothly, and Egg is a demi-beast. You shouldn't listen to what people say, you should listen to what they are. I even agreed with you about this ecclesiast being okay with this. But were you wrong? The founding party is okay with everything. Look around, he spreads his arms. They do not have enough love for the human crew to oppose anything anymore. We're on our own. And do you propose dance music will supplant the system? Anodic dance music, you know. It's regular dance music wasn't hard enough, and yes, I do. You know what this kind of stuff goes well with? Don't you have to be on drugs for that, though? Only a little. Not cool, shake my head. All large human gatherings are narcotic. Ask any such undertaking in history. This included, he nods towards a human-shaped pillar nearby. Chemistry is true to its word. Huh. <sighs> the lieutenant interjects. There's a difference between narcotics and group elation. One kills you, the other does not. The supercharged humanism that the innocentic system has been feeding us on giant city squares. That's not a drug. The sugar and wheat it feeds us is healthy. Forget it, he waves his hand. It would become an imbecilic discussion. You two continue. It's more hardcore that way. Let's talk about... No, not the glasswork. How do you sell in? Hard to say, cop man. Signs in here are distinctly wild. It's gonna take a while before everything's properly synced. I did get to talk to the crab man, though. You mean Tiago? Anyway, he's been giving me kind of a psychic rundown of this place. Dude's seen some crazy shit, but he's actually a lot like us. You mean all of his mother's love stuff isn't too spooky for you? Have you been listening to what the egg's been saying? Love is hardcore, man. And mother's love is the hardest core of all. The man picks up on stuff, and he knows a lot about the church. I got to learn a lot from him. Good thing he didn't squash him. What's with the clothes? He shrugs. They're hardcore. Yeah, you look like a woman with those earrings. You know what I think? I think that man, woman, and child are arbitrary divisions which serve to bind humanity to serfdom. That's it. They're just clothes. Are they? They look outlandish. It's a style, you know? Normal hard style. Anyone can wear it. What did Tiago tell you about the church? The crab man's been lurking here for a while. He's experienced things. Things that give off bad signs, as far as we can tell. The Ubis built this place about 380 years ago as a sarcophagus. Do you mean there's dead bodies here? Not like literal sarcophagus, I'm just being metaphorical. What's it for? Encasement confinement of something they're afraid of, something new and unheard of on the Isola. He looks up into the darkness beyond the beams. I think that's what the crab man is experiencing when he climbs around upstairs. Like, this is some old world shit the Ubis had heard about, and thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church, surrounding it to contain it. 
I don't get it. To contain what exactly? I don't know. And it's not something they properly understood either. But what it does... Or what it does, but it's what this sooner person is looking for and trying to measure he nods towards the woman. It'll be fruitless, though. She won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything, all those things they really can't. What do you think makes you think soon is going to fail? Seems to be the trend around here, doesn't it? You can't measure shit like this. It's not like... with substance. I found a doomed commercial area in Martinez proper. Maybe it's the same thing the Ubers are trying to contain. The young man rubs his chin in silence and mumbles like a concentric ring spreading out the struggling villages. And that's what caused the communards to or fail in defending the beachland. Yeah, a lot of failure has gone a lot or gotten down around here. Think there's any merit to the theory? I don't know, maybe. Maybe not. It's not a thing we can answer, cop man. Even I have limits. I'm a limited psi person. Well, if it's without substance, I guess there's nothing to worry about. Maybe you can figure things out, cop man. I think we got on a good level here. The signs are sinking up well. Anything else about here? Nope. Take care, Noid. Is that it? Did we finish the quest? Yes, we did. Perfect. Let's get out of here. Let's go talk to the cryptozoologist and also Titus, who are both in the same area, which is nice. I wonder if we're going to have another communard or revolution here. It's going to be an interesting thing to see what, what happens, you know? There is a distinct possibility that terrible, terrible things will happen. I have a feeling there's a war on the horizon in this game. I don't know why. Like a small civil war or something? I don't think it'll be big, like, massive war. For one, there's no central military force here anymore aside from the actual... Um, coalition government. But there might be like a small uprising or rebellion or something along those lines. I guess we'll have to find out. What do we have to do left? Okay, let's take a quick look here. So we're just in karaoke. We need to... find a rich person. We need to get Joyce's info on the lynching. Which we can do now because we have our badge. We want to find booze and drink it, but we're not going to. Excuse me. Oh, stupid sneezes. Oh wait, there's people by our car. Hang on here. That's one brutal motor carriage. Says the young man with piss foot written on his back. Piss? No, it's got four letters. Piss ferret? Oh, no, I know what it is. Never mind. If I were a real skull right now, I'd jack it. Paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. His companion wears the simple yet elegant slogan, Fuck the world. Snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. He agrees. Well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... He turns to his companion. Who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches or skulls. <laughs> I love how it blares it out. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and... <laughs> on the contrary, the part of the presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay, then let's indulge some... In some intellectual exchange, these young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Who are the skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? It's not a question. Don't get into it. I'm so glad you asked. The question was rhetorical. He replies, raising his open hand. The skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertian... Besmertian? Besmertian. Besmertian, or the Besmerti, the Immortals, are the West Revisholian crime syndicates, the nastiest bunch of psychos ever, jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases, possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger infamous for their non-verbal modus operandi. Non-verbal. If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. 
Lieutenant's voice is calm as usual, a testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Jamrock, or you can find them loitering around their brightly painted, bottom-lighted vehicles. I oh, can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. Do you know anything about the murder that took place over there? Murder? A man was hanged in the back of the whirling in rags. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it, he clears his throat. It was a man. Also, he was hanged. Don't fuck around, I am the law. He was hanged from a tree? I mean, duh. These punks don't know anything. Let's just move along. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? Ah, oh, this sounds like epistemology. I feel so occupied with thought that it begins to question the thought itself. However, there's no way these young men could possibly aware, be aware of her work. I know that you don't know shit. Exactly. How can one know shit? For example, how can one be sure that there truly is a body hanging behind the hostel? What if it's art or just mere specter? It's not. A man is dead and we need answers. So what do you think we know? It's about the jackets. What about them? Why does your jacket have written on it? Well, first off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has a character and I do like piss. That's weird. The word piss, you know, epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem and not as they are. And I guess it's also a communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you got to admit, it catches the eye, and since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself conveys the message. Uh, what? And what I mean by this is we're all piss, you know, and the world is inherently meaningless. It seems that the young man has a certain expertise in at least one field, even if it's rather narrow. Why do you fuck the world written on your jacket? Like I said before, so many men search for the one for so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship, the thrill of the chase, the hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. I'm wondering if the poetics come up come with a jacket or if they're derived from something else entirely. To catch a fish, you need to haul the lure many times, and even then it isn't certain you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though, that is a terrible metaphor. You get more fish in a shorter time. And for a time, and for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must not, or one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the world. Me too, a minute, but in a weird way he's got a point. Is it coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Hey, Kim. I lower my voice, yeah? Do you think it's a coincidence? What is? There are two of us and two of these jackets? The lieutenant looks confused. What are you implying? Which one would you wear? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. Are you more of a piss or a fuck the world kind of guy? Neither. Come on, Kim, it's a mental exercise. Fine. If only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were already ready to be down on that path, I think piss is the stronger of the two statements. That works. I feel more like I'm more like a fuck the world kind of guy. Seems about right, the lieutenant marks, especially considering your heroic exit attempts. That's an origin story for a dynamic duel right there. We have a very low chance of getting them. So are we done here, or you don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you? One of the jacket owners asks impatiently. Do you guys know Cindy the Skull? The young man's eyes glaze over as he marks in a voice filled with longing. Oh yes, yeah, Cindy's a proper... Right, proper skull. Yeah, the other guy lights up too. A true artist of the future, just like Arno Van Eyck. By the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards, he adds, as if returning from whatever void he was visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is unusu unusually lenient towards them. I see you kids are into hypnotic dance music. Oh man, yeah, he exclaims, then stops himself, processing the rest of your question. We're not fucking kids, man. Be wary of the abyss, his blonde friend adds ominously and points to his temple. Why? Probably because of how nonverbal their mode of operation is going to be. Lieutenant answers for the two rebels. It's a threat. A threat. Good, I like those. But I don't, the lieutenant interjects quietly and quickly. In fact, I dislike them so much I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Yeah, there's no need for that. He raises his open palms. We're just talking here, joking too. Stay light, man. Yeah, didn't you cop... Or... Yeah, didn't you cop, like, have some questions about the skulls or some shit? Why aren't there skulls in Martinez? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where the gangs are concerned, the lieutenant replies instead. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Don't you worry about that, we're gonna make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are, the young men exchange approving nods. Your rhetoric is confusing, are you part of the skulls or not? We're not franchised skulls, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. And what makes you think that the organization would accept you? 
because we can be just as psycho and vicious, you'll see. But in a non-threatening and definitely legal way, the other one quickly adds and whispers something to his friend. Well, I'll fuck the system from the inside later. Just be cool now. The damage will be tenfold. Right on, fuck. The blonde agrees and prov provocatively spits on the pavement. So what's happening now? Enough about scullery. Wait, what was the thing? What was the check? It's, uh, half light. Shrunken cop head material. 17, okay. Let's take a quick look at our clothes. See if we can get some half light in there. It's minus one half light. We do have some skill points for half light, but we'll wait on that. There's plus one half light. Plus one half light. We look ridiculous again. Alright, that's it for now. Anything not giving us half light or anything lowering our half light, I guess I should say. Okay. We'll see what we got for a percentage now. We'll save and try it out a couple times. 42%? Okay. Shrunken cop head material. Let's try that again. We only get one chance for this. I kind of want their cool jackets because I want to see what kind of clothing it gives. Or what kind of bonuses the clothing gives. That right, hey! Look who it is! Shrunken cop head material. Alright, try one more time. It's 42%. We should statistically be very close to getting it. That right, hey! Look who it is! Come on, rolls. Why do I always have the worst rolls in the world? I have the worst luck at RMG, like, ever. Maybe not ever. There are some times it works out pretty well. Right, but... hey. Look who there it we is. go. No, 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 Shrunk don't ask anything. Be subtle and scary. That boy's dream of being the skulls, use that. Boys, with those jackets, you're gonna be skull kings in no time. Wait, no? He quickly looks around. Skulls don't have kings, he pauses. I think, and we're not even in yet. Yeah, man, keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Prospect must be a hierarchical term. Probably in the lower end. Not even prospects and already aspiring to be kings. While well, you boys are ambitious, the lieutenant's voice rings over the plaza. Only prospects are already planning a coup in the skulls. You're destined to go far. He gets it. Passive-aggressive flattery. Shut the fuck up! The youth presses through his clenched teeth. There's panic in his eyes. Are you trying to get us killed? Now bring it to the jackets and start shouting. Yeah, we want to be a cool killer skulls too. Like you guys, but we don't have skull jackets. Please be quiet. Not much is left of the nihilistic rebel at this point. The young man before you is scared out of his mind. What? What? Do you want to take the jackets? You offer us your jackets like that? Be in play to refuse. Oh man, his shoulders slump under the weight of sadness. Okay, he says finally. I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans anyways. This was stupid. Fuck the other one sighs deeply. The lieutenant watches the boys take off their jackets with mild amusement. Since you said you're more of a piss <clears throat> kind of guy, I'll take the other one. Oh, I'm absolutely okay with not having either one, thank you. Why not? They're a pair. We can really raise hell. Go undercover hard. This case doesn't require us to go undercover or raise hell. In fact, I don't think the jackets will be useful at all. I just wanted them not to have them anymore. Cold-hearted cop. Well, whatever. I'll take both of them then. Do. I'm fine with that. Pity, these jackets are meant to complete each other. If men... If a man were standing alone on the street corner with piss written on his back, it'd be just an individual that has taken a liking to urine and fuck the world all on its own is frankly generic. The dark-haired man just stands there defeated. The wind blows. I don't know, Eric, it's cold out, he finally says to his friend. Yeah, the blonde man replies, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. We kind of did. Let's see what the jackets do, though. I'm kind of curious. So we have a jacket that's plus one drama, plus one authority, and plus one half-light, plus minus one rhetoric. So we have two jackets now. I look incredibly stupid. Well, we still have a little bit of time left. Let's go talk to the cryptozoologist and see if we can go talk to Titus. We only have, like, well, we can just go over time a little bit like normal. Ooh. All right. Where is this guy? There he is. It's great to see you again, officer. He My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on. Talk to her. Yeah, okay. We'll talk to her first then. Oh, sweetie. I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. It was a truly epic long distance trek. Truly a lot of legwork. My partner adores these kind of things. The lieutenant is still catching his breath. Here, 
I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. He hands, she, uh, sorry, she hands you a thin ribbon held together by a silver bird skull. It's a tie. Mexican origin. The pin is antique. Quite special. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hands. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. You could ask her about this but when you get the time. It's probably cryptid, but the phasmid, of course, is more important. Haha. <laughs> Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He gives me a gruff pat on the shoulder. He tries to play cool or remain professional, but inside, this man is itching for news on his traps. So I check the traps. Actually, did you know Gary was hiding the armor? Hell no, I had no idea, and I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty or disloyalty are not one of them. Thanks to the man mutters in the distance, he doesn't dare say more. Check the traps. Good, okay, he pricks his calm, and... One of them was empty. Completely empty? The cryptozoologist's eyes grow wide? Yeah, there's nothing in the trap. No locust, no phasmid. No locusts, but no phasmids either. That's not ideal, but he rubs his chin. The empty trap was the one at your campsite. Maybe this factors in somehow? I definitely left that one stocked. Hmm. Right from the campsite, the old woman's face lights up. It just means the Insulindian phasmid is even more clever than we thought. She is engaging in a well-known self-deception called motivated reasoning. You should correct them. Of course, the detective wishes to himself. More clever. Yes, the phasm... The phas... Phantasmodia picked off the locusts and escaped. This is good news. Though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps and make them more secure. His companion sighs. Another trip to the reeds? It's not very scientific. Yeah, you know what? That's exactly what it is. What a deft hunter this phasmid. Of course. Be sarcastic. He misinterprets your words. Unless you have an alternate hypothesis you like to venture. Mine stands, okay? Actually, no, his tone changes. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. I brought some great news to you. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Society Cryptozoologique Crypto de Revachal is yours. Heartfelt gratitude, but does it feel like closure? What really happened? I have a good chance of this. Thank you. It's an honor. He says with a straight face, then he turns to you. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... I develop an alternate theory about the missing locusts. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though it was shaken, most likely the hands of a young person. Hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. I think a little hooligan named Kuno might have stolen the locusts. A little hooligan? But what would a child want with bugs? A shadow of worry passes over the woman's face. Oh my dear Morel, you've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. I'll talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. Delinquents, my favorite. It doesn't sound like it's really his favorite. Oh, you've been so dear to us. Please let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. The man turns to his companions. Well, I see you got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play Suzerainity, but no more field trips for me. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Really, Gary? The woman's voice is a little shaky suddenly. We're getting somewhere, but here? Or somewhere here. I'd love to play Suzerainity, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. He looks at his tea. More it's been fun, really, but I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no. No need to apologize, Gary. You've been more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on the game of Suzerainity today, though. We're gonna follow this through. Get going. Alright, Gary, let's talk to you one last time, then. Then we'll call it a video. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. I mean, officers. Okay, I'm just going to go through this conversation and see if there's anything else that we had to do. Alright, Gary can go. He is free and clear, and we're just under 20... just under 30 minutes. So, we'll talk to Titus in the next video, but for now, I think we're good. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.